Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, spines on sticks. In the Chincha Valley on the Peruvian coast, researchers unearthed 192 human spines. These spines weren't connected to the rest of the bodies, but rather threaded onto posts made of reeds. To get a good idea of what this looks like, imagine taking somebody's spine, then threading all the pieces onto a long stick, almost like a club made of bones. That's exactly what the people here did 500 years ago. It was a brutal yet fascinating burial tradition that was only practiced in this one place in Peru. Forget about the rest of the country and even all of South America. The Chincha Valley was the only place where people put spines on reeds. The archaeological team excavated 20 different sites in the region and found evidence of the practice at every single one of them. Why did they do it? The best guess anyone has is that the practice started after the invasion of Peru by the Europeans. It was fairly normal for European settlers to damage graves by looting them in search of treasure. For the Chincha people, this was unacceptable. An important part of their culture was to bury dead people fully intact with all their bones. With the graves disturbed and the skeletons ruined, archaeologists believe the Chincha put what few remains they could find back together as a sort of spine on the cob. They then reburied the spine in hopes the dead could continue to be at rest. Number 9. Mummified Mongolian Monk In Mongolia, a mummified monk was discovered by a local man rummaging through a mysterious cave. This man first took the mummified monk back to his home in the Mongolian capital of Ulaanbaatar before trying to sell it on the black market. Local police got wind of his plan, swooped in and arrested him, and the monk was taken to a lab to be studied. Even though the monk is clearly a mummy, he is not actually that old. He's also, depending on who you ask, not dead. Buddhist doctor to the Dalai Lama, Dr. Barry Curzon, says the man is in a state called Tukdam. This is the deepest stage of meditation that a person can go into. If one is able to stay in this highly concentrated state for more than three weeks, their body shrinks. They slowly decay until nothing is left except hair and nails, and a rainbow appears somewhere in the sky overhead. In scientific terms, a monk in the Tukdam state is in fact slowly starving themselves to death until their heart stops beating. Whether a rainbow appears overhead or not, the monk still meditates themselves directly into the afterlife. That's what happened to this monk, who sat down in the lotus position in that cave, was covered in cattle skin, and left for over 200 years. Number 8. Hair Bedsheets Perhaps the worst bedsheet in the entire world was recently on exhibition at the Museum of London Docklands. There is an inscription embroidered at the bottom of the sheet in human hair, which quite likely came from a severed head. It's the bedding version of a book bound in human flesh, a sheet embroidered with real human hair. And while that itself wouldn't be out of the ordinary for the 1700s, the fact that the hair came from a decapitated person just makes it gruesome. Perhaps even stranger is that the bed sheet was never intended to be gruesome. It was embroidered as a tribute to James Radcliffe, the grandson of King Charles II. James was executed on February 24, 1716, for the role he played in the Jacobite Rising. This was a rebellion that happened in England 300 years ago. James' wife was Anna Maria Radcliffe. In the four months that James awaited execution in the Tower of London, Anna Maria was allowed to stay with him. After James was killed by decapitation with an axe, his body was stitched back together and handed over to Maria. She then took hair from his head, hair from her own head, and made a sheet with it. Researchers at the museum are fairly certain she used James and her own hair because the embroidery is clearly in two different colors. In her grief, Maria crafted a morbid reminder on the linens. Number 7. The Sacrifices of Yinshu The burial ground at the Chinese archaeological site of Yinshu, used during the Shang Dynasty, has revealed some pretty brutal practices. By studying the chemical composition of the human remains here, archaeologists learned they were ritually sacrificed, but that wasn't all they endured. These people, believed to have once been soldiers captured by the Chinese during warfare, were enslaved and then tortured. The victims were put to work for several years, kept alive on the most meager of diets, and forced into labor until they outgrew their usefulness. At that time, their captors would sacrifice them in a great ceremony. Here's a bit of background on the Shang Dynasty. They ruled the area of the Yellow River Valley from the 16th to the 11th century BC. 
It was around 1300 BC when the first major city in China was constructed by the Shang, called Yinshu. Its ruins, where this burial ground was discovered, are near the modern city of Anyang. But it was during the final two centuries of Shang rule that they really began to get barbaric. There was something happening that destabilized the society. In a desperate last attempt at saving themselves, they began slaughtering people to appease the gods. This is similar to what happened near the end of the Maya Empire when they got desperate for rain to grow their crops, just before the entire civilization collapsed. In China, archaeologists have estimated 13,000 people were killed as sacrifices in a span of just 200 years. The bodies discovered in the graveyard here did not come from Yinshu. Analysis revealed they came from farther away, meaning the victims were captured and brought to the city. Researchers were even able to look at their diet by analyzing the bone collagen of their skeletons. They found that these people were eating gruel made from millet, barely even food. This was worse food than the poorest villagers ate. The consensus is that as the Shang collapsed, they started sacrificing their slaves to make their gods happy. Number 6. Aztec Ritual House Experts with the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Mexico carried out excavations in the ancient Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. They were looking at a housing complex when they found a ritual structure that had been used in complex and scary ceremonies. It was more of a ritual house, a specific kind of temple that wasn't officially a temple. The house was most likely used for rituals to mark the beginning and the end of life cycles. Archaeologists found incense burners, vessels for holding ceremonial liquids, and the cremated skeleton of an infant inside a pot. They also discovered musical instruments made from bone, such as flutes and ocarinas. All of these date back to the 16th century, sometime between 1521 and 1610 right after the Spanish conquered the city and defeated the Aztec. Nobody knows exactly what the ceremonies being performed would have looked like, but based on the archaeological evidence, there was a lot of music, a lot of smoke, and a lot of fire. We don't know if this infant was deceased before the cremation inside the pot, or if the death was part of a sacrifice. It could also be that the ritual was in honor of the infant, as a celebration of life and death. It's all quite mysterious. What do you think was going on in this ancient Aztec house 500 years ago? Let me know your theories in the comments. And now for number five. But first, want to give a big shout out to Joker Joel and Jennifer Ballesteri. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more videos about scary archaeological discoveries. Number five, fed to the lions. Archaeologists in England discovered a bronze key handle carved kind of strangely. The key handle was carved to depict a lion and a man locked in combat. Experts say this could be a real reflection of what was happening in Britain under Roman rule 2,000 years ago. But it's not quite as innocent as it may seem. Men weren't simply fighting lions for sport. Instead, archaeologist John Pierce says it had to do with executions. He believes the Romans used to throw prisoners into a lion pit in front of spectators, who could then watch the ghoulish show as the lions ripped men limb from limb. The key handle was initially discovered in 2017 while excavating a Roman townhouse in Leicester. It's only about four inches long, crafted around the year 200. The man fighting the lion has long hair and a bushy beard, which has made archaeologists believe he was supposed to represent a barbarian. To the Romans, a barbarian was anyone not from Rome. And because Roman law allowed criminals to be thrown to wild beasts as punishment, this may be what the key was made to represent. What was just a myth prior to this discovery now looks very real. If you weren't Roman and you did something the Romans didn't like and determined to be a criminal offense, you would be in danger of being fed to some hungry lions that had been exported to England from North Africa or Mesopotamia. Number 4. A Lair of Bones A disturbing lair of bones was found in a gruesome subterranean cavern in Saudi Arabia. The lair is just as horrifying as it sounds. Archaeologists found the remains of at least 14 different animals here, including human beings. The hollow cave is called Um Jirsan and is a system of winding lava tunnels cut through solid rock by volcanic activity many, many years ago. It's located beneath the volcanic fields of Harat Kebar. It was long after these tunnels were formed and the volcanic activity settled down that so many bones found their way here. Researchers believe the bones were carried into the cave by hyenas over a span of 7,000 years. The whole cavern system may as well have been taken straight out of the Lion King. It was likely a den used by a family of hyenas who dominated it for thousands of years. 
They brought their kills and scavenged carcasses back to the cave and devoured them, leaving the bones to accumulate over time. The only thing scientists are unsure of is if the human skeletons found in the cave were from people who had been hunted by the hyenas. Either that, or they were corpses that the hyenas dug out of the graves, which is possible with these scavengers. Number 3. A Salty Sheep's Leg Sometime around the year 600 BC, mining operations started at the Cherabad Salt Mine in northwestern Iran. Salt mining continued here all the way into the 20th century, just until a few decades ago. When activity finally stopped, archaeologists were able to go in and explore the location for historical research. Since 1993, experts have uncovered the bodies of eight ancient miners who had been left dead in the deep underground tunnels. What's truly fascinating is that their bodies have been mummified to perfection by the salt-rich soil and dry atmosphere. But that's not all. Archaeologists have also found plenty of mummified animals. One of the weirdest things they discovered was a sheep leg that had been left in the mine about 1,600 years ago. The dry conditions left the DNA of the sheep in amazing condition. Researchers from Trinity College Dublin were able to see exactly what kind of animal this was. Amazingly, it showed no evidence of being a woolly, fleeced sheep. Instead, the sheep was hairy like a wolf, not fluffy like sheep we're familiar with today. But why was the sheep deep in a salt mine 1,600 years ago? It was probably taken down there as a snack. The miners likely ate the rest of the sheep, which is why only its salty leg was found. Number 2. Peruvian Mummies A brand new and very ghoulish discovery was announced by Peruvian archaeologists in 2022. Eight mummified children were found inside a tomb. The tomb belonged to an elite member of a pre-Inca society who died 1,200 years ago. The eight mummified children had been sacrificed upon his death as part of an ancient funerary ritual. The research team was led by Yomira Silvia Huaman of the National University of San Marcos. They were excavating the archaeological complex of Cajamarquilla when they stumbled upon the skeletal remains of a high-ranking person. Outside the tomb were the skeletons of 12 adults and some animals that may or may not have been llamas. It's too early to say who this individual might have been. Archaeologists right now are guessing he was a wealthy trader who died before the age of 30. He was mummified and had his hands tied over his face before being wrapped in cloth and put in the ground. The small skeletons of the children may have been very close relatives of the merchant. Although the mere notion of sacrificing children is horrific to us, it was an honor for people living back then. They didn't see death as the end, but as a beginning. When those children were buried alongside the dead man, no one thought of them as deceased. They simply thought they were going to help a wealthy relative in the transition to a parallel world. Number 1. Headless Horse Archaeologists in Germany have discovered the remains of the headless horseman in an ancient cemetery. Or rather, they found the skeletal remains of a headless horse as well as the man who presumably rode it. The man and his headless horse were buried 1,400 years ago in the town of Nidlingen. This was during the Merovingian dynasty, which ruled from 476 to 750 in a large part of Central Europe. When the Roman Empire fell in 476, it was the Merovingian kingdom that rose up to seize power and begin laying claim to all the land. It was this kingdom that consisted of two major tribes, the Franks and the Germanics. The Franks would go on to become the French, and the Germanic, the Germans. It's unclear who the writer was, or even why he was buried with a headless horse. Archaeologists don't think it was a sacrifice, but probably part of a burial ceremony. Archaeologist Folk Daminger says the man was likely the head of a farming household, and so he was buried with a horse as a grave good. But why they had to cut the beast's head off is anyone's guess. Thanks for watching! Which of these discoveries did you find the most unnerving? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon for more videos like these. Bye!